It was a death that changed the world forever, and its symbol has been worn for generations by billions across the globe. The Gospels give us a basic account of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, but they don't tell the whole story. According to best-selling author Stephen Mansfield, Jesus' execution was much more intense, grisly, and violent. Stephen's new book, Killing Jesus, the unknown conspiracy behind the world's most famous execution, takes a unique look at Jesus' crucifixion. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Stephen Mansfield. It's good to have you Great here. to be with you. What sparked your interest in studying and pursuing more about this? You know, years ago when I was in undergraduate school, a lecturer came, he was from the Vatican, he was a scholar, and he was talking about the actual science and medical facts of the crucifixion. And of course, I'd read the biblical accounts and I'd been to church, but never had I thought about it as a historical event with all of that full body of information around it. It just fascinated me. So I've read whatever I could through the years and sort of made it a, a private specialty. You know, the scriptures say that Christ was marred beyond recognition. And we read that, but it's words on a piece of paper. Even when we've heard some of the worst accounts given, you say it, that it was more than we know. You know, it's, it's hard. We, we, it's, it's logical, I guess. You can't really describe all this gore in an Easter Sunday morning sermon. It's not really up to pastors to communicate that kind of thing. But think about what the scriptures tell us. He could, the suffering Messiah says he can see his bones exposed. Mm -hmm. uh, he is marred. Um, when we understand what the Bible almost begs us to understand of history, how, what a scourging really is, uh, what the crucifixion really is. Uh, Jesus wasn't just whipped a little bit and then hung on a cross. Uh, the, the scourging, for example, was about ripping flesh away. I don't mean to be too graphic. So, so the one survivor that we know of in history of a scourging, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of whipping that Jesus received, uh, his bones were exposed, his rib cage was exposed, and, and uh, this is very graphic, but organs where he could be seen inside, and yet he lived. Well, when you start putting that together with the story of Jesus, and of course, these are historical facts from Josephus and other, other uh, people at the time, Tacitus, you, you begin to understand that it's much more gritty, much more violent than the story we're often told. You talk about the why in your book. You know, here's a man who came, who, who was noted for the love he expressed to others, who healed all who came to him, who had a message of redemption. Mm -hmm. But he really also came and stood and challenged the system. That, 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 is, that is a lot of, especially in our day, we talk about you know, talk, telling truth to power, speaking truth to power, and so on. That, that's what Jesus did. Two things most directly led to his crucifixion, other than just God bringing him to the point of sacrifice. One was he threatened the connection between the Jewish leaders and the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, they, these, these Jewish leaders served, and it's just a small group of corrupt Jewish leaders, I should say, the people, he was very popular with the people. Uh, but, but the Romans sort of let these, uh, this small group rule and sort of gave them a little bit of power, just a little bit of leash. Mm -hmm. Well, when he came and he was so popular, uh, and the people loved him so much, it, it looked like there might be a popular uprising. Well, that would have made the Romans nervous. The, the second thing is that Jesus was challenging sort of a corrupt, again, little cobble, a little, little syndicate at the temple. It was controlling things, controlling the temple trade. That's actually what moved those money-changing booths into the temple of the court of the Gentiles. Jesus, in clearing the temple, Jesus, in speaking to them so bluntly, challenged this sort of corruption. I don't want to use the word mafia, but something like a corrupt uh, little network. And, uh, and so all of that caused them to say, this man's got to go. Yeah. Where, you, you mentioned, you alluded to this just a few minutes ago, but where did you do the research? Where did you find fact on this? Because it is fact. It, it is fact. And even in the book, although I haven't written a book of apologetics or necessarily history in the true sense, uh, in the back I have a, a little section about the Roman leaders and Roman writers who mentioned the crucifixion. There's far more information about Jesus. I was in a classroom not too long ago in a state university, and I heard a professor say, you know, really, there's not much evidence for Jesus. Well, that, that could not be more true. Josephus, Tacitus, uh, the Sanhedrin documents themselves the, the, from, the, from the Jewish ruling council. Council. So there's lots of evidence. Mm. And uh, I mentioned five or six very clear references to the crucifixion of Jesus under Pontius Pilate. So there's not much, not much guesswork. What, what, what really fills out the story for us is in the Bible we're told he's scourged, he's crucified. Well, what do those words mean? You have to go to Roman history to understand mm -hmm. it. And when you do, it's a much more powerful story than the one we're normally told, you know, just in our usual church life. And when you understand it, 
the understanding of the price he paid for us becomes so deep and powerful and impactful. I mean, much of what he went through was almost like being skinned alive. And then you talk about the breathing yeah. when someone is crucified, which is horrific, just being able to catch air. Absolutely. When I talk about these things, sometimes I can sound like just a guy who's interested in the gory side of it all. But, you know, Jesus was scorched. He had great pieces of his flesh ripped away. And I think about that, bones exposed. Then he's put on a cross. It's not just about hanging a man on a cross. Crucifixion is also about the fact that he can't breathe when he's, when he's hanging down, where he has to push up on the, scar, the nails through his feet. Well, that, so that it's that dance of death, the Romans used to call it in the barracks. And, and at the same time, and this is gross, but he's like sort of scraping his back every time, that opened back, exposed bone. These were agonizing things. And uh, I, I think it, it made me love Jesus more. Mm. It also made me have an appreciation for the cross. You know, Paul said to the Corinthians, I want to know one thing among you, Christ and him crucified. And when you understand how vast and powerful the crucifixion was, mm. you understand why he could say such well, a thing. Well, you talk about the fact that so many wear the symbol of the cross without really thinking yeah. through exactly the price that was paid. When people read Killing Jesus, Stephen, what do you want them to come away with? I want them to understand, first of all, that Jesus was a historical figure living in a violent time, that horrible things happened to him for the message that he proclaimed, and all of it was done redemptively for us. I yeah. think it should deepen our love for him and deepen our appreciation for how powerful Scripture is mm -hmm. and its historicity and, its, and, and Christ's entrance into history. Yeah, well, you've done some solid research on behalf thank of the you. rest of us, and we thank you. It's a fascinating book. It's called Killing Jesus. It's available wherever books are sold, and I think it'll take you to the foot of the cross and also enlarge your your heart and your gratitude toward the one who saved us.